design pretty. Anyway, I'll just firstly apologise that it um because it's been way too long since my last video, um and that has pretty much been down to uh, because I've been busy, busy, busy uh, making this brand new bench. So I got the inspiration from this bench uh, from a video that I've probably watched about six uh, times um, in the last week and I'll put a link to that video um, in the description and it was about making this joiner's bench and a joiner's bench is well technically an English joiner's bench it's a bench that someone would go um, and just whip up on site and for that reason they would make it out of um, fasteners and we all know that fasteners like screws, nails, bolts, etc. are no way to put together a bench. So that's the first thing I changed about the design. I use joints and it is really, really strong. So that's the first thing that I changed. Also, um, the join this bench um, had big diagonal bracing that went along all four corners. I've only got it in these uh, two corners. And the joiner's bench also had longer aprons. The aprons went all the way down to the floor, uh, but mine are only uh, that big there. So why did I change my bench? Because I have that nice little bench over there in the corner. But there were a few problems with it. Number one, it was too small. Um, the top wasn't big enough to handle large pieces of stock, so I made this so it is 120 centimetres long and 45 centimetres wide, which is plenty, plenty big enough. Um, and I also wanted it to be able to hold lots and lots of my scrap with it if I just move um, the camera. So, all along here, there are two tiers of scrap wood. So, on this top level, up there, we have things such as sterling board and lots of strip wood floorboard then down at the bottom we've also got um things from plywood scraps mahogany scraps fence panels loads and loads of things and we've also got this little scrap bin that i uh, took from my other bench and it's still in there and it's really really full of my small bits and bobs so on top, I wanted to keep the top relatively clear, um, so I had to work out what tools I'd be wanting on the top. So, um, number one was my drill driver. I use this each time I'm in the shop for drilling holes and putting in screws. Also, at the moment, I'm not sure if it's going to stay there, we've got its um, a spare battery and its charger. Also got my most commonly used drill bits. Um, and a bunch of pencils just ready to go um, and use. We've also got this little miter saw and this is a handheld miter saw also sometimes called a precision miter saw um, and obviously it's not it's not done by power just some good old bustle and the bed of this miter saw is not very large so if I've got a long piece of stock in here it's not really going to be held very very well so what I did if we just move the camera again, you can see down there, I've made this. Now it's currently all slanted, I can do that, it's on hinges, so it goes up like that, there's a little uh, block underneath there, which that stops on, keeps it nice, uh, nice and flat all the way across, which is just ideal. Now also, I wanted to run power um, over here because the nearest plug is all the way over there so I'm, <laughs> I'm no electrician I wasn't going to be running a power cable under the floor so I just found an extension lead and it's just behind the bench uh, next to that bird house um, the tools that aren't on the top the, the other essential tools uh, are all stored on the legs so we've got a tape measure there we've got a set square just down there also be able to see my saw and then we've also got hammers and mallets uh, everywhere so we've also got my little drawer that I made, um, transferred over this has got loads of screws calculators stuff etc we've got my toolbox um, just 
in a little hidey hole as well, which is just epic. Now I had to choose a vice quite carefully for this bench. And I went with this leg vice. Now this leg vice just had a few changes done to it um, since I made it a few uh, videos ago. So the first thing that I changed was the handle. Uh, so it's now nice and long and round, which is just ideal. Um, and I've also made it so it goes all the way uh, to the floor. Now, what a few of you said in the comments was, if I've got something clamped up here, all the way up there, the end's going to go like that, and it's not really going to give much clamping force. So I watched a few videos about leg vices, and quite a common thing that people did was they took a triangular piece of wood, and they used it as a wedge on the bottom, which I thought was a really smart idea, and it works super, super well. You might be thinking, oh, why didn't you use your Moxman vice? I hated those two little prongs that come out and you walk past it and you catch yourself uh, on it each time. So, I just wasn't having it. I also wanted to share one more project with you that isn't actually on this bench. So this project is this. Now this is actually a pillar drill. Now I could have bought a pillar drill but I thought, much more fun to make. Um, and they probably won't take as much space. So up here on this shelf is this quite cumbersome thing. And this is a Bosch corded drill. And it's got a big collar on it. So all I need to do is un undo some screws and that will drop out nicely. And that just slots on there. And if you push it up and down, it's going to go beautifully 90 degrees. Uh, just with a bit of alteration. So this is perfect for doweling, hole saws, etc. And I use it pretty much all the time when I need really accurate holes. Thank you so much for checking out today's video. If you have liked today's video, um, and especially this bench, uh, please feel free to give um, it a like and please subscribe. The next best thing that you can do to support me is share this video with some of your contacts. If you do have any questions about the bench, please uh, leave them in the comment section below and I'll hopefully be able to get back to you uh, quite quickly. Thanks again and I'll see you on my next video.